It is Steven Johnson off pole alongside Bullis. Eddie Abel Nisa and Brett Yule in row two. Mark King and Tony Kay off row three. The first of the Tarantas will be out of row four with Gomasol. And Greg Crick actually slipped off the racetrack while driving in third earlier today. Yeah, he did. And, and uh, strangely enough that uh, even poor old Mark King, he fell off the road after the chequered flag, which was quite amusing. There was a fair bit of oil out there. Um, your son said that there was a fair bit down there at turn six in particular. There's Andrew Fisher who's been struggling for speed out of that car. Jim Richards, your old... Jimmy's had a, a really hard time and, and he had a sticking throttle in qualifying which really uh, put him back in the thing and I said to him, listen mate, uh, obviously you didn't want to go out yesterday uh, when it was wet because you didn't want to dirty your car but uh, he said, uh, yeah, I wish I had it gone out now. You were always good for a bit of banter with the commentators when you were racing, especially in the Sierras. How do you reckon Steve will go with that? Oh, he's pretty good, you know, he's um, he's pretty focused on those sort of things and it's it's... Part of my career that I really, really enjoyed is doing the, the in-car commentary while you're driving around, and it's um, it's pretty hard these days because of the, the nature of the competition. But um, it was good fun, and a lot of people liked it. I think. Getting ready for the rolling start. You once said famously on race cam that getting around Winton was like running a marathon around your clothesline. What's Simmons Plains like? Uh, Simmons Plains is fantastic. It's you know it's it's pretty tough on the cars really, but um, yeah, I, I don't think the people at Winton. Uh, the Winton Motorsporting <laughs> Club uh, sort of liked me that much for that comment, but it was only made in jest, I must admit. OK, here we go. Can Stephen Johnson win the race down towards turn one like he did last time? Rolling start. Bullis needs to be a little bit more careful with that right foot. Yeah, well, he's on the, the probably, the you would say, the dirty side of the racetrack at that point, so um, there's every chance in the world that uh, he could actually have a go. Now, at least they go when they wave the green flag here, so... <laughs> which makes it a little easier, I think. <laughs> yeah, no acceleration zones in Touring Car Masters. Big lock up from Kosolki, and he nearly gets into the back of Karen Poloski. There goes the big Trans Am around the outside. It's a, it's Palmer in the Trans Am. Mm -hmm. Obviously the brother of uh, Ross Palmer. Yeah, there's a famous family that you yeah. have a fair bit to do with. Absolutely. And down towards Temple we go. But look at this, Bullis is on the outside here. Can he get a bit of a switch back through the bowl and have a crack? No, oh, would be the answer. I think Steve's a bit wake up for that. Yeah. <laughs> on board we go with Cameron Silly, Valiant Pacer. Listen to this car scream in top gear here. Yes. Gets fourth gear. Well, that's... See, they've run certain diff ratios, and I know that it's only a six-cylinder. He's on the limiter in top gear, which is not a bad deal. You're on the money there, Dick, because he's actually going to throw in a uh, different dip overnight to try and get those things to rev a bit more freely towards the end of that straight. Well, I think Stephen had the same problem uh, yesterday and you know, when things dried up a bit, it was really, really sort of getting a bit, hot, bit, bit high up in the RPM. Oh, Bullis. Oh, Bullis a bit sideways. He caught it and he got the yeah. inside of that curve and it sent the back end of the Mustang Trans Am sideways. There's a famous looking car, the X-Bob J Jane. style. Yeah. Style, yeah. yeah. The original is worth over a million dollars, so we're not going to go sending Phil Pye in that car. I remember the original vividly because of the simple reason it was such a big engine. That single car for it was an enormous motor car, extremely fast. And that's the moment there for Bullis. Bullis, yeah. Did a good job, yeah. second gear. He's, I think this is a car I think that's built by um, Road Ride with rusty prints and things like that, so it's a very well built motor car. Rusty's having an identical car being built at the moment as King looks up the inside of Yulden, not going to happen there. And he was, Rusty was showing me photos yesterday like it was a praying grandfather looking at grandkids. Yeah. He is all excited about getting into that car. Winton is hoping to uh, get into that car. It's going to be fantastic to see Rusty out there because he still has all his cars that he's had um, right through his whole career, which is, is a real effort for him. And Jimmy, he's, he's had a tough weekend because of you know, where he ended up qualifying and things like that. But, uh, he'll improve that car. It's going to be a fast car. Slowly but surely, he's trying to pick his way through the field. Tilly around Tilly. the outside. Can he get the big valley and stop? Yeah. That's the question. Nice move. Nice move, but unfortunately, the poor six cylinder is going to suffer down to the straight line, I think. Kosolki's oh, no. got an issue here. And that Tirana is a fast car. Look at that. Yeah, well, here goes Gomesol. So Kosolki's backed off in the big Falcon Coupe. Further back in the pack, we've got Greg Crick up the inside. He's actually doing a great job fighting through a few more spots after being turned around earlier. And Seaton here getting caught up behind Kosolki now. Does Kosolki go to the pits? He does, and that'll free up Seto. 
Glenn Seaton's last race was 2005 driving for you at this track. It was, yeah, and that's going back some time, really. Isn't it? And he missed practice yesterday because he was at the racetrack watching his own 16-year-old son get some laps at Sandown. <laughs> Third generation Aaron Seaton has been doing some speedway racing and now racing a Porsche, and it's on between Crick and Yildon. Yeah, Cricky's car is very fast too. Like, um, and this, this track really lends itself to cars that have got a lot of straight line speed. But there again, you've got to have brakes to pull you up at the other end too. We're just about an hour away before Scott Pye will get back into the famous car 17 for race number five. You've been in the news a bit this week, your team. Oh, man, it's been pretty hectic in the last couple of weeks, I've got to show you. But um, yeah, we're, we're, we're managing at this point. It's, it's, been a, it's been a very turbulent sort of week. Oh, now. That doesn't look good underneath there. There's a bit of smoke. Uh-oh. So, Bullis might have issues here. He's running in second. Stephen Johnson skipping away with this race like we saw him doing race one. And Bullis, is, I think, is about to call this off. Yeah, I think so. He's obviously got some sort of an oil leak there. It doesn't sound as if there's anything wrong. I think you'll just find there's an oil leak there somewhere. So. Oh, dear. So, hopefully, he's not dropping a lot of that oil onto the racetrack. It's hard to know. And Bullis. he will... Go falling back in the pack here now, Dick. Yeah, I think he's sort of realised what the problem is, and uh, and the thing sounds pretty good. It's just the fact that it's obviously got a, an oil leak and a serious one by looking at that. Yeah. Who would want to be the series leader in this series at the moment? We had Mediki come in as the series leader, and he's had a DNF and issues in the morning warm up. Well, when he fired yeah. the car up this yeah. morning, the, Bullis the takes is, the lead off him, yeah. and now this happens. Now this happens, which really is playing into Bowie's hands for the simple yeah. reason that. Yeah. Uh, um, the, the contenders for the championship really um, uh, are, are having problems. Oh dear. So Gavin Bullis with issues and he brings the big Trans Am in. Oh dear. Well, it looks like the last train to Fernie Grove. <laughs> it's okay when you get repeating all the jokes. That's still funny. Did you say that about Peter Brock? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> that is cool. And uh, in comes Bullis on the Pro Drive built car. Will uh, hopefully be able to come out for the other two races tomorrow. Oh dear. Yeah, the biggest situation there is uh, when, when the smoke stops, you know, the oil's run out, so it's going to be a big problem. Yeah, and there will be a little bit of that on the racetrack, you'd have to say. That's a lot of oil. Yeah, well, hopefully a lot of it burned on the exhaust. Yeah. Meanwhile, back on the racetrack, there's Gomesol fighting off. Bill Pye and Pye's gone. Oh no, he's put a dent in it on the right front right, by the looks of it. Heavens. Now these Z01 Camaros are a uh, serious bit of work. Bob James brought a couple into the country. He actually picked them up in Melbourne, Florida and brought them over to Melbourne, Australia. Yes, he did. And uh, one of them was his road car, it was an automatic, and the other one he took to the racetrack with a big 427 7 litre Chevy motor. And he just smashed everyone in that car. Absolutely. It was a very plain but very fast. They banned the motor, said, Bob, you've got to put a 350 in it. Exactly. And he still won the championship. Yes, he did. Pretty impressive, because that Z01 Camaro was built for drag racing. But it just looks like a great road car still. Yeah, and it does look like a good road car. And like, one would hope they're going to bring them back out again, to be quite honest. Yeah. They? Now you're talking. And he's having a good fight with the iSeq Tirana right now. That, that Tirana is an extremely fast car. It's, it's built by um, Jimmy Stone. Stone. Yep. Yeah. I saw a shot of uh, Matt and Jim watching on earlier. So Richards is in this battle with Meaniki and Glenn Seaton. We are really turning back the clock right they're, now. They're all starting to come on, yeah. Meaniki had to start off the back after having distributor issues. That comes off the back of breaking a lifter when they fired the car up this morning. We've got Mark King up there who's doing a great job. Mark's obviously uh, Andrew's uh, teammate in the, in, the, in the other Camaro, so in the white line racing team. And Eddie Albonisa is fighting him off here. So King's actually fighting for second outright, which is impressive as a pro-am driver. He's out there mixing it with the, uh, the pro master guys. There's Tilly. He's been pretty much glued to that HQ Monaro for the whole race, and this is exciting. Absolutely. Here we go, the 350 cubic inch motor of the Chev trying to get around that Tirana. That must be quick if it's trying to fight with the Tirana. Oh, get yellow flags down here. Yes. So, oh, oh Meaniki might have to give yeah. that spot back. Oh, oh. no, okay. Seaton again. Oh, oh that's like, close. Freestone avoids him. That might have been some of the oil out of uh, Bullis's car. Yeah, 
because uh, there's no way that Glenn Seaton, with his amount of extreme talent, would be making silly errors. I'd have it a guess that there is a bit of oil out there. So what does Mediki do about that? And was that pass made under yellows? Or maybe he'll try and argue that he had his nose in front anyway. Well, Andrew, uh, maybe he had the wrong glasses on. <laughs> I think we need to invite you back up for TC and commentary more. Nick, you're on fire. <laughs> Let's have a look at uh, this battle for second as Mark King wrestled it away from Eddie Abel Nisa. That was a good move by Mark. And in the background, we see the spinning Glenn Seaton. Now, what's probably happened there is Bullis was trying to go so far up the racing line, he's probably left oil really close yeah, to the edge of the racetrack. Really track. close, yeah. And I think that's where it happened is we see the Lubramax Chev go past a fellow Camaro, but two very different style of Camaros. And the history behind those two cars. Mediki on a charge here, he knows that he needs to get as many points back after the early disappointment yep. and two race wins on the streets of Adelaide to kick off the year. And, and he's chasing Gamers up there, so it'll be interesting to see how he goes to straight line and gets the drone at the door. But they are fast these cars, they really are. And he's been also given 100 RPM penalty for having that win at Clips. Also, it's an ongoing thing they keep yep. pinging you RPM throughout the year, and you don't get any back until you finish off the podium at around. So it's a bit of, uh, I guess, levelling the playing field. We're well, trying to make it a level playing field. Mind you that these cars are so much faster than they ever were. So well, something's happened here to kick because he's dropped back here behind a few guys. Crick's now found himself into second position after being fourth a couple of laps ago. So King's got problems, and I think he's going to try and get this thing home for points now. No, he was putting in a great drive. That's a shame. You know, he's, he deserves to have, have a good run, King. He's, um, he helps so many people through the field with, with King Springs. You know, just about every V8 supercar is running Springs uh, made by him, so. Ooh, a bit of smoke out of Yulden's car, too. As he cruises by in the look. The problem is he's got another lap on top of this to yeah, go, yeah? Which so is going to be difficult. It's going to hurt him. Top of the screen, you see Stephen Johnson running away with this race. He's got a three-second lead. So his lead's actually dropped off a second. I think maybe he's just starting to cruise. Well, I think uh, because you only get one set of tyres for the weekend, I think it's uh, pretty wise to look after him. Ooh, that was an awkward one for Bill yeah. Pye. He yeah. got stranded there behind King's Camaro, and that'll cost him one or two spots. This is the car we were talking about earlier. And uh, a great history behind Bob Jane winning two of those titles. Actually bought it off the 1960 Indianapolis 500 winner. The is original that one yeah. that he brought into the country. Both cars, to be honest. Here is Stephen Johnson with a comfortable lead from Greg Crick. And uh, Mustang Sally's going to continue the hot streak. Now there's a green flag being waved there, which might suggest we've got localised yellows. I think the green flag must be... Uh... Oh, oh, there we go. Oh. oh, hang on to it, Tony K. Not quite. Oh, oh don't, no, don't go, go up the there. Funny. You'll never get off. Yeah, don't do that. And he's going to lose a spot here with Yulden and Tilly. He won't get off there because it's, he's pitched that hard up the bank. Oh, no. What a shame. Now, he was sitting pretty as well inside the top five. Meanwhile, here comes Stephen Johnson. He's just backed on off a little bit. And Crick's been closing up. But he's not going to be able to get close enough. Final corner, Stephen yeah, Johnson. Yeah. Do you want to call him home? Oh, let him go. You do it, mate. <laughs> Onto the John Bow straight, which I, is I, fitting. I, and he wins I, the I race. I think it'd be a conflict of interest. To be quite <laughs> <honest>. <laughs> Congratulations, Stephen Johnson. And uh, awesome to have his father, famous father, and touring car Hall of Famer here in this country alongside me to call him home as he takes two from two. Did he copy well, his celebration of you? Though? Kingy was uh, in the background there, so... He ends up getting home for 20th, which is uh, not what he deserved because he was no. in there inside the top two. Might be a bit of oil out there to clean up after that one as well. Stephen Johnson, two from two. Mustang Sally doing the goods. Well, I think it's used to that position, really, isn't it? It's a good point. <laughs> it, it knows only one way, and that is to get to the front. Brent Yulden will finish just outside the top three as a result behind Crick and Abel Nisa doing a good job. Jim Richards climbed up to eight. That's a pretty good effort for Jimmy to come all the way through from there because uh, he really did struggle in the first race. Behind them, we've got uh, the local guys and Glenn Seaton who had that spin, which is unfortunate for him. Paul Freeston, we saw a little bit of his car, he ended up down in 12. And poor Tony Karanfiloski would end up finishing back in 20th.